Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory. If God be with us, who be against us? I need to go somewhere first. Ephesians. Chapter 1. Ephesians 1 first. Ephesians 1 first. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, happy days now. Happy be cool. <laughs> verse 3. Ephesians 1, verse 3. Let's speak it. Whew. Is everybody there? Anybody not there? <laughs> okay. Praise God. Are we there now? All right, cool. All right, can we speak it together? We're going to sow, amen? amen? Till we get to sow what? Verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. In Christ means in the anointing. Hmm. Does everybody get it? In the what? Anointing. Wow. See, people don't even know they're blessed at every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Because when they're not connected, they don't get it. That's what the enemy wants to do is disconnect. So, Because, see, that's a part of not only your reality, but your identity. In Christ, in the anointing, we're connected. Without the anointing, we're not connected. Nothing but a bunch of words. Verse 4, just as he chose us in him to be before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having what? Predestined. Everyone say predestined. predestined. In other words, he had pre-planned for you to be at a certain place at a certain time to send you a rescue. Whether you choose to accept it or not is up to you. He will not interfere with that. Amen. Having predestined us to what? Adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood for the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, his plan, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. So there's a point of gathering. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being what? Predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. He talks about predestined, which is very powerful. In other words, there are things that we call predestined events. Everyone say predestined events. These are things that God has purposed to be manifested, to get mankind's attention, to gather, to make a way of escape, or to warn. These are predestined events that he has so that there's a constant communication with mankind, creator, and creation. These are predestined events. And Matthew 24 Predestined events. In verse 3, Matthew 24, verse 3. 
It says, now, as Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, as the disciples came to him and privately telling and saying to him, Lord, tell us, when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age of grace? That's what that means. And Jesus answered and he said to them, take heed that no one what? Deceive you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you are not troubled for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation. That is considered ethnic group. And kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. So this is a predestined event, beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation, which, are, which is a predestined event, tribulation. So we see beginning the sorrows and tribulation. And they will kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. And many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. In this gospel, the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babes in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be what? Great tribulation, which is another predestined event. Such has not been seen since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be what? Shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look here, is the Christ or there, do not what? Don't believe it. So we see that there's three predestined events, the beginning of sorrows, tribulation, and great tribulation. We know that we are coming to the end of the beginning of sorrows, getting ready to enter tribulation. Does everybody understand? If we haven't entered it already, but only God knows. Amen. And Daniel chapter 12. Hallelujah. Predestined events, beginning of sorrows, tribulation, and great tribulation. You know how many people, how many people don't even know this? Many. Daniel 12 and verse 1. Daniel 12, verse 1. Oh, happy days. Everybody there? Oh, it's good to hear the pages turning on a Tuesday night. At that time, Michael, the archangel, shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble called Jacob's trouble. Such as never was seen, there was a nation, since there was a nation. Didn't we just talk about this in Matthew? Amen. Even to that time, and at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book. And what book is that? The book of what? Life. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. 
But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall what? Increase. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on this river bank and the other on that other river bank. And one said to the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river, how long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? Then I heard a man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time, times, and half time, which means three and a half years. And when the power of the holy people have been completely shattered, all these things shall be what? Finished. So what is he talking about? Great tribulation. Does everybody understand that? Because at the end of great tribulation, there'll be another visitation. Verse 8, although I heard, I did not understand. And I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Are we in the end times? Yeah, so these things are being released. They're being unfolded. There's things that are being unfolded right now. More knowledge, more understanding, technology. All of these things are being unfolded for people to search out things and find things out of what's really going on. In other words, there'll be more truths released to combat more of the deception that's being released also. He said, verse 10, many shall be what? Purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall what? Oh, but none of the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall do what? They shall not understand the predestined events. But the wise shall understand what's going on. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days, which is three and a half years. So we just read about this in Matthew. I want you to see the parallel between this. He's talking about events. But blessed is he who waits and comes to 1,335 days, which is actually three and a half years, but a leap year. But you go your way till the end, for you will shall rest and rise, arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. So we see here that there's going to become a time of Jacob's trouble, amen, which is called tribulation, seven years. He said, seal the information, seal this info until the end times. Knowledge, technology will increase. There'll be three and a half years of great tribulation. He's explained it to him. He said, wicked won't understand any of this. Only the wise of the spirit will understand the predestined events of the end time. But the wicked will not be able to. Both, again, numbers are associated with three and a half years, but one is a leap year. This is a talking about not only Jewish believers, which are called Messianic Jews, but Christians who are followers that will be rescued. Does everybody understand that? In Matthew 25, so if great tribulation is three and a half years, tribulation is three and a half years. Amen? So we have the new be beginning of sorrows, tribulation, great tribulation. And then he parallels and he says, in a dead time, there's going to be a certain time and event where there's going to be an abomination. And this is where the covenant will be broke. In Matthew 25. <clears throat> now he begins to explain something which is powerful. Because he's been talking about the wise and the wicked, right? Or the wise and the foolish. He said that the wise will understand these events, these predestined events, and they'll be alert and ready. But the wicked can't even comprehend them. It won't be given to them. Remember, Jesus said, for me and you has been given the mysteries of God, but to them it will not be given. They will not understand. 
In verse 1, he said, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be like in ten virgins, which, remain, which represents a virgin is washed by the blood of the lamb, who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Hello! Took no oil with them. No anointing. They were not connected. Does everybody get it? He's talking about so-called believers that are disconnected and those who are connected. Why? Because the ones that are connected will have understanding. The ones that are disconnected will not. He said, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they were all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose, trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. Look at nobody can sell oil to another individual. The price is paid by that individual personally. Through what? Praise, worship, baptism of the Holy Spirit and maintaining it. But the wise answered and say, no, lest there should not be enough for you and us. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. Everyone must buy their own oil. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And answered and said, surely I say to you, I don't know you. I don't know you. This is phenomenal because, see, everything is about the anointing. Jesus, the anointed one, and his anointing. It's not about how much word you know. It's not about how much works you've done. It's about who you know. Because when you know him and you're in fellowship with him in the spirit, you know all things that are pertaining to a righteous life. Even if you've never read the Bible in your life, you will still know it. Amen? So he said to them, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So we see there's wise and foolish Christians, those maintaining connection to the Spirit, and those compromised, become lazy. There were those who were consistent, and those who drifted. Again, you never know when God is coming for you that day. Amen? Or he's coming for everyone that day. <laughs> In Jeremiah 8. That's an event called the rapture, isn't he? The removal. Jeremiah chapter 8. The anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, which separates the new man from the old man. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 8, verse 1. And at that time, says the Lord, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah and the bones of its princes and the bones of the priests and the bones of the prophets and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves. In other words, they're going to attempt to conjure up and do witchcraft. They shall spread them before the sun and the moon and all the hosts of heaven which they have loved and which they have served and after which they have walked, which they have sought in which they have worshipped. They shall not be gathered nor burned. They shall be like refuge on the face of the earth. Then death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of those who remain of this evil family, who remain in all the places where I have driven them, says the Lord of hosts. Moreover, you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, Will they fall and not rise? Will one turn away and not return? Why has this people slidden back 
Jerusalem is a perpetual backsliding. They hold fast to what? To see people who hold fast to deceit are in constant perpetual backsliding. They may step forward once, but then there's three steps back. They may step forward once and then four steps back. They can never maintain a consistent arena. Their unpredictable double-mindedness and dangerous. It says they hold fast to deceit, which causes a person to be in a perpetual backsliding condition. They refuse to return. They refuse to change. I listened and heard, but they did not speak aright. No man repented of his wickedness, saying, what have I done? What have I done? You know, it's not about what you've done. It's about repenting no matter what, whether you know it or not. Amen? Everyone turned to his own course as a horse rushes into the battle. Even the stork in the heavens know their appointed what? Times or predestined events. And the turtle dove, the swift, and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people do not know the judgment of the Lord. How can you say we are, how can you say what? We are what? Wise. How can you say we are wise? And the law of the Lord is with us. Look, the false pen of the scribes certainly works falsehood. The wise man, men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Behold, they have rejected the word of the Lord. So what wisdom do they have? Therefore, I will give their wives to others and their fields to those who inherit them. Because of the least, even to the greatest, everyone is given to covetousness or greediness. From the prophet even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. For they have healed the hurt of the, of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were, were, were they ashamed? Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No, they were not at all ashamed, nor did they know how to blush. Therefore they shall fall among those who fall. In the time of their punishment, they shall be cast down, says the Lord. In other words, they're going to conjure up dead in witchcraft to cause many to fall into perpetual backsliding because they still hold on to the deceit that shapes their agenda, forsaking the warnings of the Lord, not able to understand the predestined events that are coming and the, and the current events that are here. They will fall into the judgment of the Lord. Does everybody get it? First Thessalonians 4. Predestined events. Is everybody okay? We're getting somewhere. We're laying a foundation. A reality foundation. First Thess chapter 4 verse 13. Oh, happy days. First Thessalonians chapter 4, 4, verse 13. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. Now, he's talking about those who have passed. Amen? He calls them fallen asleep because they're not dead. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in, Christ, in Jesus. He's going to bring them with him. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up, which means raptured, 
to gather with them in the clouds and meet the Lord where? In the air. So the Lord will not touch the ground. He'll be in the air. Amen. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore what? Comfort one another with these words. So we see that there's going to be a shout and a voice of an archangel. Everybody will hear it. Saved and unsaved. There'll be a trumpet of God and the removal of the body of Christ to the wise followers, those that have even understood the predestined events. Now, there are things that parallel with this predestined events. They are called the Feast of the Lord. Again, they are the Feast of the Lord. Amen? They're not man's feast. They're not Israel's feast. They're the Feast of the Lord. And in this, we see that a trumpet will sound, a trumpet of God that's associated with fulfilling the Feast of Trumpets. Now, there are seven feasts. Amen? And this is pretty wild because the next feast to be fulfilled is called the Feast of Trumpets by Jesus Christ, who's the only one that can fill the feast. These are seven predestined feasts of the Lord, which are events. These are predestined events of the Lord called feasts. We know that the first feast is called Passover. It's when Jesus died on the cross. The second feast is called Unleavened Bread. When he went into hell, because leaven means evil, and he took the keys of the devil. The third feast is called Feast of First Fruits when he rose. Then the fourth feast is called Pentecost, which was 50 days after he rose. And he was taken up. And the next feast is called Feast of Trumpets. But what follows the Feast of Trumpets is atonement, which is great tribulation. It's where the wrath of God comes for three and a half years. And then the Feast of Tabernacles for 1,000 years. Again, we go back, to, go back again, so we see that these predestined feasts and events, they coincide. Does everybody get it? They coincide with all the events that are happening right now. Feast of Passover, Jesus dies on the cross. Feast of unleavened bread, he descends into hell, takes the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Feast of first fruits, he rises from the dead and he is taken up. 50 days later, he releases the Holy Spirit, the anointing to start his church, his body. 50 days later, in Pentecost. And from the Feast of Pentecost, his church is empowered to combat, to restrain. They're empowered by the anointing until they are raptured at the Feast of Trumpets and removed from the body, from the earth. And then the wrath of God comes for three and a half years, which is called atonement, which means bloodshed. And after the Feast of Atonement, we return with the Lord and establish the earth and the millennium kingdom of God Almighty for 1,000 years called the Feast of Tabernacles where God comes and dwells with man. Again, the feasts of the Lord are practiced and pre-rehearsed <laughs> since the time of Moses. These are again called the Feasts of the Lord of predestined appointed events to be understood by true following Christians. These things should be understood. Somebody get it? Why? Because we have the wisdom of God. In Matthew 24. Predestined events. Is everybody there? 24, 23. Again, then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there, or do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will rise 
and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Lord, the Son of Man, be. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Now, immediately after tribulation, now did he say immediately after great tribulation? No, but he's already verified that there's a great tribulation. So he says immediately after tribulation, not great tribulation. So you got tribulation, then great tribulation. Amen? He says immediately after tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear where? In heaven, in the air. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will do what? He's going to send his angels. He's not going to step on the earth. This is rapture. Does everybody get this? And he will send his angels with a great sound of a what? Trumpet. And they will, get, they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. And he will, and um, now, verse 32. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. The fig tree represents Israel. When its branches have already become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that the summer is near. Verse 33. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away until all these things take place. Now, a generation is approximately 70 years. It could be between 70 to 75 and maybe 80. But it's really designated more of a 70 years. Now, from 1948, 70 years from that is 2018. So we know that there would be something that Jesus was going to do. He was going to participate in some special event. Amen? There would be some invasion of the anointing of Christ Jesus before 2018. That's what we're going to talk about. And I say to you, this generation by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, the days of Noah, Nephilim, giants, Amen? Flood. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be, in other words, Sodom and Gomorrah also. As, for as in those days before the flood, they were what? Eating, drinking, marrying. Hello? Marrying. Was well, there anything wrong being married? No, but there is something wrong if you got a man marrying a man and a woman marrying a woman. And giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken, the other one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken, and one will be left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what the hour of the Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the, of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming in an hour you do not expect. Who then is faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food to do in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find him doing. Assuredly, I say to you, he will make him a ruler over all of his goods. But if that evil servant, compromising servant, says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with the drunkards. That master the servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint his portion with the hypocrites. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Again, after trib, not great trib, there's a warning, 
of those compromising and becoming lazy. In this generation we talked about it, which is up to around 2018, 70 years is a generation. Something would happen, something would occur of a divine intervention before 2018. We are in the days of Noah and Sodom and Gomorrah. There are invasions of doctrines of demons, evil spirits, body sac baby sacrifice, bloodshed. We're seeing things that are incredible right now. There is perversion of sexual inhumane acts. Great delusion, loss of identity and reality, and a falling away of man from the faith. We are seeing it right before our eyes. But Jesus is doing something. He said he would do something, and it's already happening. In 2, Timothy, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Oh, happy days. Hallelujah. Why are we getting this? So we are reminded. So we are prepared. So it is written to give away. Because people don't know. They have no idea of predestined events. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Let's speak it now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him we ask you. So his coming and our gathering. Amen? Not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one what? Deceive you by any means. For that day will not come unless the what? Falling away comes first. That means falling away, which we are in already. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, so we know that's coming next. This is Satan who exposes himself, calls himself God in the temple. This will be the end of tribulation in the beginning of great tribulation. That's when you and I are removed. When we see that, that is called the abomination that Daniel spoke about. It says in verse 4, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This is what's going to break the covenant, the peace treaty. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he, capital, who now restrains will do until he is taken out of the way. He's talking about his body. Once we are removed from the earth, because we are the restrainers, amen? Once we're removed, all hell will break out. Verse 8, And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will eventually consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of truth that they might be saved. For this reason God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, and that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in what? In unrighteousness. Wow. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for what? Salvation through what? Sanctification, separation unto him by the spirit and belief in the truth to which he called you by our gospel for the attaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, the coming of Jesus, the Christ, our, in our gathering, it's predestined event. Amen. And we will know and once that once we see, listen, we're gonna see we're gonna see the, uh, the Satan enter into this temple. We're gonna see it. And call himself God. We know we're out of here. Amen. We'll be out of here. Says that a trumpet will sound, right? And the falling away to fulfill predestined events, feast of trumpets, <laughs> which will follow the trumpet. The Feast of Trumpets will follow the trumpet of God, which removes the body of Christ. And these will also 
what will also follow, the, the trumpet of God will be the trumpets of God in tribulation. So it will be the trump of God and then the trumpets of God. Does everybody understand that? Which will be tribula great tribulation and the wrath of God. So there's no coincidence that we have a president called Trump and a vice president called Pence. Trump what? Pence. Hello. There's no coincidence. What is this? <laughs> These are trumpets. <laughs> These are warnings. These are awakenings. Amen? <laughs> events. Look at, think about this event. here. Look at Remember we talked about 2018. Predestined events over America. There was a full solar eclipse on August 21st, 2017. Over America. It's called the Great American Eclipse. Visible by all Americans. Passing from uh, the uh, Pacific to the Atlantic coast. It was a predestined event by God. That started off something. God's intervention. Does everybody understand it? God's intervention. That will begin seven years of plenty. And it would end with another predestined events on April 8th, 2024. Which would be another fuller eclipse from um, Mexico, South Mexico, to Canada through the United States again. Making the end of the seven years of plenty very possible. Does everybody understand that? In Genesis 41. See, people don't know that President Trump election is a predestined event. And Pence, his vice president, is a predestined event. Warning mankind of Trump ends that are leading. Genesis 41. Glory. Predestined events. Seven years of plenty. Hallelujah. Verse 25. Now when you understand the life of Joseph, who God gave dreams and visions of, you know, he explained these things, these events, <laughs> to his brothers and they hated him. They finally sold him. <laughs> and he couldn't understand what the heck was going on. <laughs> and he was sold as a slave. But God used him in all of these things. He granted him favor even when he was in the prisons and he served uh, servants of Egypt. God had him hidden for a specific time. See, it had us hidden in darkness for a predestined event in time in our lives. Amen? In verse 25, Genesis 41, 25. Is everybody there? Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Then seven good cows are seven good years, and seven good heads are seven years. The dreams are one. And the seven thin and ugly cows, which came up after them, are seven years. And the seven empty heads, blighted by the east wind, are seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken to Pharaoh. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Indeed, seven years of great plenty 
will come throughout all the land of Egypt. Now, I want you to understand that Egypt means house of bondage. And this country has been in bondage for multiple presidencies. Does everybody understand it? It's been considered Egypt under Babylonian control, or what we call deep state these days. But after them, seven years of famine will rise and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine will deplete the land. So the plenty will not be known in the land because of the famine following, for it will be very severe. And the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice because the thing is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. I don't know if you all understand this or not, but this country was about to be lost. Businesses, taxes, laws were preventing businesses from existing, causing large corporations to leave and go open corporations in other countries, Mexico and other places, because all of, and then the environmental rules and laws that were put on, it, it was smothering and, and, and this country in business. We were losing like crazy trade agreements. We were paying taxes to all of these other nations and yet not receiving any taxes from them. We were being destroyed. It was all a part of the enemy's plan. But remember, God said that in this generation he would do something. Something was going to happen. In verse 33, Now therefore let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. Hello. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land. How about judges? And collect one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in the, in the seventh plentiful year. In other words, let's collect foreign trade taxes. We are now collecting multi-billions, 200 more billion dollars a year in taxes. We are the largest oil-producing country in the world. Now, that's phenomenal. We've never been there. We have the highest unemployment rate ever. I mean the lowest, I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, how about the highest employment rate ever? <laughs> Hallelujah. We have the lowest unemployment rate ever. Our stock markets in, have reached maximum multiple times records. Why? Because God intervened and he said he would in this generation. In verse 35, he said, and let them gather all the food of those good years that are coming and store up for grain under the authority of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. Then that food shall be as a reserve for the land for seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land may not perish during the famine. So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and the eyes of all of his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this? A man in whom the Spirit of God, a man in whom is the Spirit of God. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, And as much as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. And Joseph said, and Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all of the land of what? Egypt. All the land over America. Again, Egypt is a house of bondage under the Nephilim race. Child abusers, sacrificers, deep state, democratic party, even Bush. All of these were corrupt organizations and families that we've been lied to, to bring this country down because they are part of another race. 
proclaiming to be Christians. They're not. God sent his trump card. Hello. To turn the world into the greatest harvest and awakening. It's not over in America. It is globally expanding. Why? Because he said he would do something. We are in the time of seven years of plenty before the time of seven years of famine. But to receive plenty, you must be positioned. Amen? You got to be positioned or you'll miss it. You can't be a compromiser. You can't be lazy. Because what God has given, well, he will all be taken. Amen? Amen. We got to stand firm no matter what. Remember, we're going through trials and tribulations to bring more wine. We're being crushed to bring more wine. Why? So we can shine even lighter. We read that things are going to happen. I spoke about some of this already that I, I, I saw years of, of marriages being destroyed and families being destroyed and businesses being destroyed because of compromise. And he just said it, and Daniel, and families will be destroyed because they did not what? Discern predestined events. And this is why we're being reminded tonight because it's been granted to me and you to know the mysteries of God and these events, to write them down, remember them, and declare them because we are in the end days. And we will see from 2017 to 2024, seven years of plenty until seven years of famine. Does it mean it's the end? Only God knows. Amen? But we can tell by signs and wonders and events that have happened. Amen? This is talking about America. Well, America's paralleled with Israel. Remember when Israel rejected Jesus, not all of them, God established America. Israel is associated with the law. America is associated with the spirit. From this country, multiple millions of missionaries have gone out to rescue many souls. God has not forgotten America. He's fulfilling what was predestined, what he said because of what has been sold out of this country. He who sows to the spirit reaps life. He who sows to the flesh reaps corruption. We are blessed to know, and we are in a time of plenty. And it isn't to just to build our homes. It's to build his kingdom, because we know things are going to close up soon. We can't keep trying to look at everything else and get so caught up. We know things are going to come to an end. It will be a great end for me and you. Now, that doesn't mean that all of a sudden we're going to be raptured after, after these seven years. It means we're going to be wise in these seven years and be prepared because we may go through three and a half years of famine. Does everybody understand that? But we will be prepared because that's a part of the great harvest until we are removed. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We thank you for the warning and preparation. Let us not miss the predestined events that you have called forth, but bring wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we are ready to serve all the way home for your glory, your honor, and your praise. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.